All right, so at first I thought this was going to be a super calm week in AI, but with the Grok 4 release, we do have a lot to talk about in this week's episode of AI News that you can use. The show that looks at all the AI releases this week filters out the ones that you can use today and that matter. It is summer, so things slowed down a little bit. So for most of this episode, we'll be talking about Grok 4. And then we'll be touching on things like Gemini expanding its gems into your Google Docs, which I think is really interesting. And a few more quick hits. Let's begin by talking about Grok 4, the big announcements that happened at a very unusual time. For me here in Europe, I'm in Slovakia visiting family right now. The presentation happened on Thursday morning and XAI revealed their brand new Grok 4. So what's the headline here? Well, it's the new king on all benchmarks, including humanity's last exam and ARC AGI, the two hardest benchmarks out there. It absolutely passes the vibe test. I got a Grok 4 heavy subscription here that costs $300, by the way. And I ran various test prompts that we use for these reasoning models. And it's exceptional in all of them. More details on that in a second. And this smartest model ever has a new voice mode on mobile too. Millions of people are watching us right now. Are you excited? Oh, I'm thrilled, really. It's like being on stage at the Old Vic with a sea of faces out there. Now, why is this the smartest model ever? They give quite a few explanations in their one hour long live stream that you can find linked below. But if you want the summary of it, they essentially gave it 10 times more computing resources for the second part of the training, the reinforcement learning, and they trained it on tool usage. Whereas the last Grok only had access to tools, but it was not embedded in the training. I think a good analogy for that is something like giving a 70 year old person a phone with a manual and then kind of figuring out how to do that, right? But on the other hand, if you include it in the training data, it's like a kid that grew up with a smartphone. And then if you give both of those people with a smartphone a task, well, who would you expect to perform better? They have the same tools, but it doesn't mean they can use it in the same way. And I think that analogy transfers to the older models versus the newer models. In OpenAI's version, that would be ChatGPT 4.0 versus O3. O3 was trained on the tool usage. That's why it's so damn good at things like browsing the web and using that data to give you better answers. Same with Grok for now. It has been trained on the tool usage and they upped the computing resources in the training by a factor of 10x. Okay, so those are the cliff notes on the technical, why is it so smart? But what we really care about on this channel is how does this perform in the real world? Is this a model you should consider? And although I've only had a few hours at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident on my opinion on this. And the reason for that is that the answers it gives are not extremely lengthy. With the OpenAI and the Gemini models, you often get very long answers, which take a long time to intake and analyze. Whereas Grok even even on advanced question is relatively concise. But I think I can distill my opinion so far down into one sentence. If you like O3 or O3 Pro, you will absolutely love this. It's about five to six times faster than O3 Pro. It's more concise, yet hits the most important points. And the prompt adherence here is as good as ever, meaning every single word that you put into the prompt, it will actually respect and execute on. Now, what is it not so good at? Well, first of all, coding exercises. I'm not saying it's bad, it's actually really good, but just from the first few tests, like, okay, this is just a basic thing I run every time a to-do list app because it says a lot about the visual language of the models. It does it, but don't expect aesthetics like you would from Claude. And I've seen other opinions on Twitter mirror this sentiment too, that for development tasks, this would not be your first choice. But for many people, that's not the main thing they go to LLMs for. For me personally, it's a lot of strategic. It's a lot of planning related tasks that I do all the time as an online entrepreneur. And for that, O3 and O3 Pro have been the best. And I think this is better. Here's a good example of a concrete test prompt we use on the context of one of our team members, Daniel. And basically he's asking about balancing his week between walking the dog, downtime work and all that. And without going into great detail, this answer compared to all the competitors that we tested, Claude 4, Gemini 2.5 Pro and O3 Pro, it's concise, it's to the point. It gives you the schedule that does not forget a single thing you asked for. And it gives you various productivity techniques without overwhelming you with a list of 15 different things you could be doing. It just gives you the top three with short reasoning on why. The team outlines that the way this Grok 4 heavy model functions is that it runs multiple agents and then it compares the results and gives you the best one. This is something that might be occurring with some competing models, but we haven't heard this explicitly stated yet. Overall, I just feel like this is currently the best assistant that there is out there. If you want something for coding tools, look at Claude and Gemini. If you want something for writing, well, a lot of that is subjective, probably Claude. But if you want something as an assistant to strategize with, to solve complicated questions, well, I think this is where that really shines. Even on therapy slash coaching related prompts, it just strikes a good balance of personalization, actionable recommendations without being too agreeable or overwhelming the user with all the options. I don't know. I guess my first take is I just really like this for the stuff that I do. And also lastly, I want to point out that troubleshooting tasks like this 
I sometimes call them tech support. O3 was the undisputed kick for that. It's just so good at browsing the web, finding current documentation, and then presenting a step-by-step -step tutorial to you. I'm not sure if this is better, but at the very least, it's equally as good. But it does come at a price. Access to Grok4 Heavy, which uses this multi-agent approach and then presents you with the best answer, costs $300 a month. That's 50% more than all the $200 plans from the competitors. And if that's worth it, it's really for you to decide. The platform is solid. They have essential features like projects, and it has a new voice mode on mobile, which I didn't get to test yet, but here's a little clip of it compared to OpenAI's advanced voice, which, yep, that's exactly how they demoed it in their presentation. They made a direct comparison to OpenAI. Usually we do that on this show, but I guess they were just bold enough. Hey, I'm going to say a number, and can you say the same number back to me? One. One, got it. This is like a fun little game of Echo. <laughs> What's next? Two. two. Oh, you said two? Uh, Three. Three. <laughs> Four. Nice and steady. What's next? Five. Five. Nailed it. This is pretty fun. Feel free to keep going or switch it up. Hey, Grok. Hello there. How can I help you today? We're going to do a little test. Can you repeat after me? One. One. All right. What's next? Two. Two. What's on your mind? Three. Three. Need anything else? Four. Four. How can I assist you? Five. Five. What's next? So as of benchmarks on Arc AGI 2, it doubles Claude Opus's score, which was the previous leader. On the benchmark for the International Math Olympiad, it's the first model to score a perfect 100%. And all of this is accessible through both the web app and the API today in all geographies. The pricing of the API is similar to the Sonnet 4 pricing, so quite expensive, but not unreasonable. And it has 256,000 tokens of context. It should be noted that in the API, the pricing doubles after 128K tokens. And also they highlighted the just getting started here. For now, Grok4 has simple tools. Soon they will give it enterprise grade physics simulators and more. And they expect it to make real world technological breakthroughs by no later than 2026, maybe even late 2025, which should be interesting. And no matter what your opinion of Elon is, this model is impressive in both benchmarks and real world performance. And I'm just going to be using it on everything I do over the next few weeks. And I'll report back if there's more to say. So to talk about using these models and how to use these models. As many of you know, we do way more than just these YouTube videos to support individuals and companies in getting the most out of these tools. And particularly the different comparisons and tests that I just showed you here are something we mainly create for our community. So if you want all the details, our scoring, the latency and all that without having to test everything yourself, that's where we'll be sharing it. But also we've made some significant changes to how we run the community. And I want to take like 30 seconds to show you what changed because some of this might just solve a problem that you're having. One thing is that we're now doing video guides inside of the community. I personally do one a month the first one was on ChatGPT connectors versus ChatGPT projects and how to manage context with them. This is a video that would just not do well on YouTube over one month after connectors came out. But in the community, we really get to talk about context management and you get to look at my beautiful handwriting more often than on this YouTube. Beyond that, these are all the guides and resources we launched over the past three months, all step-by-step -step workflows. And we're running regular networking events where you get put into groups with like-minded individuals to meet others who share this passion in generative AI. One last thing that I want to point out is that we're about to release our automation and agent building course for beginners to the community first. We might eventually sell it separately, but for now it will be only available to community members. So if you wanted to get into that topic and get access to follow-up lectures and guides on more intermediate to advanced techniques, well, that's why we've been working on a course to help you start automating things away for the past five months. And it's almost done. So those are just a few updates to the core subscription that we offer here at the AI Advantage. And now let's wrap up the video by talking about this week's quick hits. Starting with Perplexity Comet. So this has gathered a lot of controversy. It's an AI web browser by Perplexity that costs $200 a month. And currently there's a wait list, early access type situation. Here's the thing. I personally don't really get the point of these AI browsers just yet. They're just like a normal browser with a plugin baked in. I'm sure there's going to be more features coming out in the future, but as of now, I don't really see the point of these AI browsers. There are rumors though that OpenAI will be coming out with their own version soon. So they might be doing something groundbreaking as of now, even with perplexity. I personally don't see the value. Maybe I'm wrong and feel free to leave a comment. Another one is GenSpark AI Docs. This is very similar to something that Canva released a few months ago with Canva docs where you can essentially use a chatbot for it to create Word documents, Excel sheets, etc. GenSpark does this too now. We tested it. It's okay if you want to do research tasks. Visually, it does quite bad. But yeah, essentially, if you like the research that an agent like GenSpark brings to the table, and then you want to turn it into a doc, GenSpark AI docs is a good option to do that. Next up, this one is actually quite interesting, and that's VO3 finally, finally adding image to video. So up until now, you could only generate text to video, or you could use their imaging model inside of Flow 
to turn text into an image and then that image into a video, but you couldn't upload your own images and turn those into videos. Now inside of Flow, that is behind their $200 subscriptions. Jesus Christ, what's happening to the AI space? It's getting so expensive. But yeah, if you're on that plan and you're using Flow, you can finally upload your own images and turn them into videos. Here are a few examples of what people across the internet have done with that so far. It's really good. It does the audio too, just like you would expect from VO Free. So now that I can talk, can we talk about why you insist on throwing the ball when you know I'm clearly exhausted from fetching? Quite impressive, yet prohibitively expensive for most people. Another interesting one is Google expanding their gems into Google Workspace. So if you're not familiar, if you're subscribed to one of the Google plans, you can create these gems. That would be the equivalent of a GPT with OpenAI, this customized chatbot with instructions and knowledge files. And now for the first time, they allow for that gem to leave the Gemini workspace and for you to use it instead of something like a Google Doc or a Google Sheet. So you can use your custom AI assistant to assist you with the creation of other documents outside of the app. I really do think that this is going to be the next step, especially for intermediate to advanced users. I think it's a really smart move and we're gonna see more and more of this because it just makes sense and Google are the first to make this move here. And then lastly, we have several updates to Hicksfield, which are just shipping week by week. There's a new in-painting feature with their new image generation model, and there's 10 new presets for their video generator. They just keep adding new stuff every week, and I personally really like the feel of their new models, especially the Sol one. And in terms of manual control when it comes to their video model, I think they do currently lead the pack, although others like VO3 or the Chinese models are better in terms of pure visual output. And yeah, that's essentially everything for this week's episode of AI Music and News. This one was a bit more focused on the Grok 4 release. And with that being said, my name is Igor, and I hope you have a wonderful week.